Hi everybody, it's Helen here from the Squiggly Careers podcast. Today I'm not joined by Sarah for this episode because it's another one of our Ask the Experts special episodes. So instead of Sarah, I'm going to be talking to Holly Tucker. Holly is the co-founder of Not on the High Street and the founder of Holly and Co. And we're going to be talking about creativity, which is a skill that we think we need now more than ever in work to help us to overcome some problems which we just don't have the solutions for at the moment and Holly has done that countless times in her career and has lots of wisdom to share with us. Also, I just loved talking to Holly. I really just wanted to become her best friend afterwards. Um, So that might come through a little bit in the conversation that we had. And this episode, just like the others in our Ask the Expert series, is kindly supported by the Boopa UK Foundation. The Boopa UK Foundation is a charity and their purpose is to help people to live longer, healthier, happier lives. They fund practical projects which have a positive impact on people's mental well-being and include things like well-being workshops for educators, working with MIND to empower better mental health in young people and also funding community mental well-being projects. So we're delighted to work with them on this series. So let's get on to the conversation with Holly. Hello, Holly. Hello, lovely to be here. Thank you so much for being here. And I'm sure Holly doesn't need a lot of introduction, but I'm going to do it anyway because I am so inspired by all the things that Holly has done in her career. So Holly is the co-founder of Not On The High Street, an amazing business which really changed what we could buy and where we could buy it from and created a space for small businesses to have a big, a much bigger market. Holly's also the founder of Holly & Co, an organisation which supports small businesses at every stage of their journey and feels very important to me and Sarah right now and oh. she's the host of the podcast Conversations of Inspiration which has some brilliant people um, that she's been on the podcast Dr Sabrina Cohen Hatton who is a friend of Amazing If and also one of the episodes that I love has got Guy Singh Watson who's the founder of Riverford Organics and I just think his approach to leadership is amazing so some brilliant people on there and actually right now there is a SME SOS special on that podcast so definitely worth listening to if you do run your own small business. And the first thing we wanted to talk to you about was that creativity is a skill. Do you think right now with everything that everyone's dealing with in work and in their businesses, do you think it's a, a nice to have skill or do you think it's actually it's a need to have skill that can really help people right now? Well, it's a really great question, actually. I hadn't thought of it in that way before. But for me, it has always been a need to have. Throughout my career, I felt that it was my creativity When I was in leadership roles, when I build businesses, inspire people, it's I feel the creativity is the fuel that I have, but also what I project, what I think people enjoy from me. But then if I look around and I've many, many industries or other careers, probably I would have said it was a nice to have. It wasn't necessary. That creativity almost had It's sectors that it would shine in, but it wasn't really necessary for society as a whole. I would probably say over the last two, three years, that has definitely changed. And one of the reasons it's changed is because I have about four missions at Holly & Co. And one of them is children and the entrepreneurial journey that they need to go on and which I feel the education system is lacking in giving them this knowledge. And it starts with creativity. And when you actually really get into it and research it and hear phenomenal people like Sir Ken Robinson talking Mm. about creativity... I think it's the Picasso quote that, you know, we're all creative as children. We just grow up and grow out of it. I would actually say that I feel that it's an absolute necessity for everyone to be creative. And I think now in the current period that we're in, more than ever, when I look at what people are going to think about, however long this is going to go on for, I feel that it's creativity that's going to spark even a bigger surge of people quitting their jobs, starting up their own dreams. They've had to creatively think, haven't they, even if they were in a nine to five, about how they were going to navigate this period of time. And I think it's this creative mindset that I certainly am passionate about that will go up. We're in the freelance economy as it is, but in this fourth industrial revolution, it's going to be the creativity of humans that will stand the test of time against AI, 
not against I'm not against it I'm just saying it's the yin to the yang it's yeah. going to be what we as humans can provide the world that you know robots can't learn and so for me now I would say I look at the society as a whole and I feel that more than ever we've got to get more creative and that starts from our education system changing I think that's a lovely statement, you know, creativity is a human skill that we can provide to the world. Like it really gives it the significance that I believe that it has as well. And just a shout out for people listening, Holly mentioned Ken Robinson and his TED talk on creativity and education is such a good TED talk. And it, it really puts as a parent of young children, it really makes me feel responsible for their creative education. So definitely worth watching that after today. It was actually one of the things that changed my life, that TED really? talk. Yeah, absolutely. Because, you know, you hear it you instinctively knew it and he reminds you of it and I feel that we all have a responsibility now as parents of children to help them understand that without creativity they are going to be lacking absolutely the tools of the future if we look at what everyone's doing in lockdown what are children doing what are we doing you know most of the people I know are more creative now than they have ever been you know, Mm. these last six weeks through dealing with their own anxieties, through dealing with this absolute nightmare situation we've been in, creativity is a huge healer for adults and children. And in the context of everything that you've done in your career, and maybe, you know, over the last couple of weeks, everything that you've been dealing with right now, who is it or what is it that's helping you to stay creative throughout all of that? Well, the last 15 years, my entire life has been surrounded by small creative businesses. I'm the UK ambassador to creative small businesses. And it's a title which I am very honoured to have because I believe I've already been very open with the fact that I'm going to retire when I'm 90. You know, so many people I interview, you know, start careers at 50, you know, so I'm 43, I think now. So I've got a long way ahead of me still, you know, I've had this section of my career. I've had many chapters in my career and I've got many chapters to go. But the common denominator, that golden thread, is the small business community. Because if you think that 99.9% of all private sector businesses are small, when you look at most of the things in our homes, in our lives, what brings us joy, it's from small businesses. When we look at the start of a fashion trend or, you know, the a movement of craft, it comes from small. When we look at our high streets and the best shops, and before this interview, you and I were chatting about <laughs> the amazing fashion boutiques that we like, they're small. And so really for me, small is the most imperative thing in my life to give me the inspiration of creativity. And I'm never bored. I'm always surprised with how small businesses will use their skills with what's happening in the world. You know, you only have to look at some of the shocking things that we've gone through, through terrorist attacks to now. Who has symbolised those moments in time? They have been small artists and we all latch on because there's something very human about it. So I believe that last 15 years, the next 50 years, it will be small businesses, founders, creators, people who shake things up in that world that will just keep the fires burning. So it's those people who are thinking differently. And for you, it sounds like you, because you connect small with so many, you're getting such a diversity of thought and inspiration and engagement, which then helps you as an individual. It's totally right. When we talk about creativity, and again, that's where I think we will all move our minds over time with this. So, you know, creativity is you know, I'm sitting in my home office and it is literally an Aladdin's cave of (laughs) colour and prints and lots of things from small businesses. But I'm also talking about the creative mindset because, you know, with SME SOS, which is what we have created, we created it 48 hours after we heard the news that we needed to go home. And I knew that this small business community, we needed to be together, anchored together in this journey. It was the way that they thought about things, their nimbleness, their chameleon-like ability to move, their bravery, the fact that they're always at the edge of their seat. They're always trying to survive. And it is that mental muscle that they have worked 
where I think when you go into bigger organizations or you're padded in organizations or it's a you're a cog in the wheel, you know, those things don't necessarily have to come into play on a regular basis. And so for me, they're innovators. They're Mm. the ones who are willing to rip up the rule book along with use their skill creatively. It's both sides. It's what they can produce, create, think, imagine, how they're able to operate and the innovation and entrepreneurism that comes out of it. It's so interesting because I've worked for several large organizations and now, you know, I, I run my own small business along with Sarah. And what I notice is that when you spend too long as a cog in, you know, the big machine, even like your, your language becomes a bit corporate and your way of thinking becomes about processes. And then you start to spend time with small businesses and they just cut through. They're like, oh, we'll just try it like this or just do it like that or just send this video. And it's like they've got all of these creative shortcuts and because they're so used to operating in that way that even if you're on, even if you've not got a small business, so if you're listening and you're thinking, well, I do work with one of those large organizations and I would like to be more creative and, and do what Holly's saying about, you know, being inspired to stay creative through small businesses. I think it's just spending some time with people who've got that entrepreneurial mindset who are the people who are constantly creative because it's almost like Einstein has this great quote about creativity being contagious yeah. and just spending time with some of those people who are constantly creative because some of it just sort of rubs off on you. I, I couldn't agree more because I also think that there is, it's a little bit addictive. Many times people are around myself and I'm highly passionate about my subject and it is you know, I don't have yoga and I don't have anything else. This is it. I have lived one life, one amazing, good life. I work incredibly hard, but it is all one thing. So from the moment I wake up to the moment I go to sleep, there isn't this sort of divide. You know, it is one life where creativity, small businesses, purpose, passion sits within the one life. And that's what I would say if anyone is listening, like you said, who maybe has that separation do surround yourself with people that are having to make their own living or they are in the creative community, they run their own shops, they are entrepreneurs, because it does rub off. And if you're then trying to tackle things, you know, their bravery and just cutting to the chase, potentially in your office environment, people would find that quite refreshing, you know, but it takes that person to do it. And everyone, you know, what do they say? Common sense is the least common something. You know, they say it's the least common thing, having common sense. If you know people that do this as a living, see more of them because it's a very happy, passionate, energetic place to be around. Thank you so much. I think just distilling our our conversation, the things that I'm taking away are that creativity is this kind of human skill that gives our ability to sort of change the world, that actually being connected to lots and lots of different people is a way that you can, you know, get some of that creativity by osmosis and not to treat this as sort of like a job to be done, like it's a thing on your to-do list, but treat it as how you do the job. It's more comprehensive than just, you know, a meeting in your diary. Creativity is sort of part of how we should be working every day. Yeah, I would would just add to that creativity goes back to that saying you know I don't have a destination in my career I don't think creativity has a destination it's definitely a way of living and one of the mottos of Holly and Co is bringing color to gray you know I believe business is incredibly colorful and just a lot of men for a very very long period of time have made it very gray and a black art Mm -hmm. and so actually now is the time where you know, bringing creativity into your life in whatever way will 100% bring colour into it. So it's not any destination. You don't hit a mark. I think in Japan, they say, you know, some of the best artists are 80 and 90 years old because they have appreciated that every decade they learn and become better. Uh, You know, and that's what I would ask your listeners to do is just to bring creativity in whatever form into their life because you'll never be sorry. Holly thank you so much for sharing your thoughts we normally ask people to share before they leave us their best piece of career advice but we've actually already asked you to do that and it went in our book because we (laughs) loved it so much and so I just wanted to take just a couple of quick seconds to read that piece of career advice out because I think people can really benefit from it so the career advice that you shared with us for our book was to trust your gut instinct your gut is your internal compass and you must learn to listen to it and we had a few pieces of advice 
advice that was so that really about trust yourself trust your gut and I think yours is yours is the one that was right at the top there so thank you so much for sharing that with us so welcome and I live by that still every single day and will do for the rest of my days it is your internal compass and it will never be wrong and it's quite a lovely guiding light that is and sort of anchors you, doesn't it? And at least you know something. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Even through all this time, at least you know what your gut is telling you. <laughs> that's that's the, the, the definite knowable thing. <laughs> um, so obviously beyond this podcast today, you can follow all the great work that Holly does. Listen to the podcast. So that's Conversations of Inspiration. You can find that everywhere you can find our podcast. You will find Conversations of Inspiration. Also on Instagram, two places that you can find Holly. So at Holly co so it's at holly.co and also at holly tucker um you can see all the brilliant things that holly's doing in those different spaces there thanks once again holly for your time we really really appreciate it i appreciate you having me on lots of love So I really hope that you enjoyed listening to that as much as I enjoyed having that conversation with Holly. I took so much away from it and I was just just inspired to take action from the conversation with her because I feel that's something that she has done continuously in her career is take action and also to support other people to do that too. And for our next episode of the RC Expert series, you're actually going to be hearing from Sarah. And Sarah is going to be talking to Harvard professor, Dr. Amy Edmondson, about trust and psychological safety. It's something we talk about a lot on our programmes and something that we think is really, really important to help people to be their best at work. So I know that you're going to get lots out of that episode. If you enjoy this one, please do rate, review and subscribe. It really helps us to help more people with their careers. And we'll be back with you very soon. Bye. Bye.